All right, behavior analysts and friends, this video serves two purposes. One, it's to provide some strategies on how to achieve peak performance steadily every single day to accomplish your goals. And number two, ways to not be taken advantage of by people that you constantly are giving, 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 and they're taking, but they're not becoming independent on their own. behavior scientists and those who aspire to just understand behavior, I want to talk a little bit about motivation. And uh, there was a quote that I heard from uh, Will Smith um, on a YouTube video, which I, I just love. You know, it was about work ethic and he explained that there's only one thing that's distinctly different about him from others is that he said, he said he's not afraid to die on a treadmill. I'm not afraid to die on a treadmill. Right? I will run. You would not be outworked. I will not yeah. be outworked. Right. Period. You know, you might have more talent than me. You might be smarter than me. You might be sexier than me. You might be all of those things. You got it on me in nine categories. But if we get on the treadmill together, <laughs> right, there's two things. You're getting off first, yeah. or I'm going to die. So in other words, if someone gets on a treadmill next to him, He's, he will not be outworked. He's either gonna die trying or the other person's gonna get off first. So I, I just love that work ethic where failure is just not an option. Hey. Don't ever let somebody tell you you can't do something. Not even me. You want something, go get it, period. It also to understand that it just takes sick, maniacal, you know, 16 hour days, fanatical work ethic to hone your craft and perfect your skill. And uh, often people see a pro athlete or uh, someone who's really well recognized or an expert in a certain area and they just assume that they're talented and that they were born, that it was innate. One of the key factors I believe to success is just not trying to tackle a million things. Find out what deeply inspires you and then just lock in on it, zone in, and work 16 hour days. I mean, there's no reason why after your full-time job during the day, you can't work between say seven and 1 a.m. on perfecting whatever it is that you want to be excellent at. If you want to be the cream of the crop, you want to be in the elite sealed team, you want to be the best at something and you want to be able to monetize it. If you want to work on your own and make your own schedule, then you're going to have to expect that your, your, your performance is elite, that it's flawless, that it's pristine, that it's uh, what I like to call nulli secundus or Latin for second to none. What would amazing look like for you? What would amazing look like if you were amazing? If you know what amazing looks like, then why haven't you gotten there yet? I want you to say, the reason I'm not as amazing yet because I hit the snooze button. That's why I'm not amazing right now. The reason why I'm not amazing right now is because I couldn't get up early enough because I told myself I'm not an early person. I don't get on Twitter every blue moon. I don't get on my app every blue moon. The reason why some of you will never be successful because you're not immersed in it. When you wake up in the morning, look at your goals. Your goals are gonna tell you what time to get up. Are you hearing me? Your goals are gonna tell you who you should be hanging out with. I can't tell you, but your goals are gonna tell you how much sleep do you need. You might not need to get up at three o'clock in the morning for your goals, but your goals are going to define what time you get up, how you live your life, how you move, when you say yes, when you say no. When you're feeling really down and you get up in the morning and uh, I, trust me, I have these days that I get up and I just cannot move my body. I, I look over at the alarm clock and, and you know what I mean. You hit the alarm clock snooze button three or four times and you just feel like shit. 
and you think, you look at your schedule, I look at my phone, and I, and I, I just can't even imagine how I'm going to get through the day. I mean, I have these feelings at times. Uh, they're fewer and fewer each day throughout the years. But I, I wake up and I don't know how I'm going to take on the day. And what I really want to suggest you do in your morning routine is watch some inspirational videos. So drink your cup of coffee or whatever it is that your rituals are that get you, that build momentum. But watch some inspirational videos. Have them queued up. Then secondly, I think you should keep a list right next to your bed with the three or four reasons why you're working your ass off. What is it you're trying to accomplish? If it's for your family, that's, that's just uh, incredible. If you're trying to hand the keys to your mother so that she doesn't have to pay the mortgage, you can give her the keys to the house, that's, that's really big. If you're trying to pay for your your son or daughter's uh, medical treatment. I mean, the, the reasons can, can run deep. If you're just trying to not feel superfluous and, and have a purpose, it's really important that every single day you pound the pavement with consistency. I find that what makes some people mediocre or just adequate or less than satisfactory with their performance is that they can't sustain the performance over time. I know plenty of people that are just rock stars for uh, you know, a week, but when Sunday comes around, they can't maintain that performance, and Monday, they're dragging. Maybe, maybe they, they can't give up having that beer or watching that football game. I just think you need sick, sick, fanatical, insane rituals that help you to be successful. Just my, uh, my tip, and I, I'm just trying to offer some value for you guys that are that have a tough time getting up in the morning like I do and then there's going to be times that you just have trouble going to sleep at night because you're going to have these these thoughts running through your head about what you have to accomplish the next day and what I would suggest you do is that you write the thoughts down or you put them in your task list in your phone then you, you put them away and another another uh, I think success strategy is that you already know what the top two priorities are for you the next day, especially if you're working independently as a consultant. You're going to really, really need to know in advance what your goals are the next day because you want to knock those goals out before you get uh, bombarded with emails and phone calls and problems. Before you're in re reactionary mode, it's really, really important that you get ahead of it proactively first thing in the morning and, and knock out those, those goals that you have to accomplish. You often probably wonder, at what point am I helping my son or daughter, or my spouse, or my parent, or a sibling, the people that you love, at what point am I helping them too much? So in other words, you feel like you're giving, 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 and all you're getting is taking, taking, taking. So I think with behavioral science behind the decision making, you can make a real crisp, clean, concise decision on when to start fading your support. In other words, helping someone that's not returning the response effort on their own. So in other words, if you're giving uh, financial support, emotional support, attention, uh, whatever the person is that you love, what, what they need to get them on their feet, just remember that unless you're slowly fading your resources and your support, then you're doing a disservice to that person or an injustice because if you drop off the face of the earth, there's no way they can be independent. And then they're gonna be, they, they, have, they run the risk of being exploited by others. Uh, so when you really, really love someone or you really care about someone, think about the fact that you could be enabling them and putting them in a worse situation. So let behavioral science determine some of those decisions. So in other words, you should be providing intermittent reinforcement. You should be thinning the schedule of reinforcement and you should be weaning your financial, emotional, or whatever type of support it is. And I hope that makes you feel better about how to slowly move the ball so that the people you love can be more independent. Again, it's an injustice if you continue providing that support.